Welcome to the Apartment Tour 2.0. It's becoming a tradition for me to show you my apartments uh, when I'm moving out. Is two videos a, a tradition? Let's call it a tradition. You will have to forgive me the mess, but I am currently trying to figure out what to do with half my stuff that I haven't shipped yet. As you can probably tell, this apartment is much bigger than the apartment that I had in Podo. I am moving on up. This apartment is located uh, more towards the city center, by which I mean it's just at the edge of Jing'an and Changning. So it's honestly perfect. You get all the advantages of the city center without having to live in the actual city center, which is noisy, dirty, uh, touristy. Basically, if you live in a city center, you're risking coming out to the very narrow sidewalk every day with a flood of people coming your way already. So that is not my vibe. I am also sick. Again, another tradition, I guess. This apartment costs way less than it should, if you ask me. I only have my agent to thank for this because uh, that guy argued with the landlord for a week <laughs> to get us this price and I still have no idea how it happened. A lot of things that you want to get done in China hinge on guanxi, which means basically mm, contacts, who you know and how good you are at talking. Not my forte, I would rather pay somebody else to do it for me. So before we get to it, uh, let me tell you this apartment costs us um, a bit less than 15,000 yuan and that is with internet, gas, electricity and water included. We've been renting it for about a year now and it's, uh, it's been an amazing experience. The landlord we got was really nice and he actually fixes stuff fast as well. How it went down was we actually never met the landlord. We signed a contract through the agent. The agent disappeared after that, but by that time we already had a WeChat group set up with the, whoever we thought was the landlord and later on turned out to be like a representative of the company that cashes in, I guess, and fixes stuff for the landlord. This is to say we are not renting it straight from the landlord because then it would probably be much cheaper still. The idea is that the landlord gives it over to the company with, which furnishes it and takes care of everything that's happening here, which is a service that I, I believe it's directed at Lao Wai because as you will see, this whole apartment is furnished in Ikea, top to bottom. And it has some certain elements that you wouldn't normally find in a, in a Chinese apartment that a Chinese person might want. So you enter the apartment and you are greeted by this gigantic TV, which this time I remember to specify with my landlord what kind of TV I want and how big I want it, right? This space right here is already more space than I had in my previous bathroom. And this is just a space from a coffee table to the TV. Of course, I kept my Lao Wai blanket. I couldn't live without my Lao Wai blanket. In all honesty, I would probably take it home. Moving on, the living room is connected to the kitchen, which you probably know from my videos because it served as a background of like the most of them. The kitchen island that we use as a dining table because it is actual human-sized table. For once in my life, I have an apartment with an actual table. If I'm being honest, the chairs that it came with are um, more stylish than useful. I never had a guest who managed to sit in it for more than half an hour, but I take what I can get. Now, the sad part about the kitchen is that all the windows come up to the building next door, but this is the sad reality when you live in Shanghai, honestly. We're lucky to get the sunlight that we get from the other rooms, which I will show you in a second. And this apartment comes with actual washing machine, the, the new kind, not the one that is loaded from the top, which, if I'm being honest, I don't like it, but it's fine. It's for aesthetic, I guess. You know my water filter by now. You cannot live in Shanghai without a water filter unless you're buying like bottled water, which is uh, a thing as well. But I, as I told you in my previous 
house door, water mafia does nothing for me. Kitchen stove, the actual kitchen stove with two burners. And now I can cook with gas. Now the, the weird thing about this apartment is that it actually came with an oven. Chinese don't really use ovens for cooking, so it's not an oven that you are probably used to if you've lived in Europe before. Basically, it's very small and it's very basic. When you try to use it, you actually have some programs to choose from. And I wouldn't say like they are very useful because fast heating, barbecue, baking, what is a baking program? Dude! Now, if you like to bake and you think you will get a good use of, a, of an oven, I would encourage you to buy, you know, electric oven that you can like put anywhere and plug to a socket because they are much bigger and much more flexible when it comes to time and to uh, temperature. You even have bottom and top heating separately here. And they are very cheap. If you buy them on JD or uh, if you even buy them secondhand, you might get a good one for like super cheap. Because this one right here that we bought for like 200 kwai is already bigger than the one that came with the apartment. So don't stress if the apartment that you're looking at doesn't have an oven, because seriously, you can buy one and have it delivered in like two days. Or maybe the same day even. It's China, anything can happen. No, because my previous apartment was for short people and I was able to touch the ceiling even though I'm like 158, this apartment has majestic three meter tall ceilings that nobody can touch ever. That's why when we rented this apartment, it already came with a stepladder. Ah, the stepladder is also from Ikea. Now, the thing that I wanted to show you that I never understood is this light right here. When you punch in the code, the code being you turning it on and off a couple of times, magic happens. Why? Who needs this? Now, as far as bathrooms go in Chinese apartments, this is something I swear to you, I've never seen before. One and two. Two things inside the bathroom. Inside the bathroom. Chinese bathrooms are like so small. They are so small that some apartments have sinks installed outside the bathroom, which sometimes is like, Stupid because then you have a kitchen sink next to the bathroom sink You can have one sink. It's fine. But anyway, two sinks, two mirrors Amazing for two people and honestly if I was alone I would probably still use both of those sinks one for hand wash and one for I don't know I'm just being a stupid white person like I don't need two sinks but anyway amazing Last time in my Pudong apartment, I told you about those gigantic light bulbs that make your bathroom warm in the winter, but the new apartments actually don't have those. They just have hot wind machine. It's not exactly AC because most of the time you're not able to like set the temperature or whether it's hot or cold. You have the, this machine that blows hot air in the winter and that's it. Now for the most Chinese thing that I've ever had any apartment have, that plastic thing in the shower right there. Now, I don't know if maybe you have it at home and it's totally fine. I think I'm just too old to understand it. But every time we have guests, they ask me, what the hell is this plastic thing in your shower? And uh, I'm sorry to admit, it also took me a very long time to figure it out. But basically, this is a thing to put your phone in so you can watch stuff on your phone while you're showering. Who needs this? In case you were wondering, my toilet is just regular toilet. It doesn't have like heating or anything. It's also not golden, but you can sit on it. You don't have to squat. The bedroom is actually quite small, but I appreciate that it has doors. Like you can actually close your bedroom for the night, which is amazing because then you have AC working just on your bedroom and not on your whole apartment. But honestly, what else do you need in a bedroom? 
there is a gigantic window pro providing natural light during the day. You have one nightstand, second nightstand, and you have a gigantic IKEA wardrobe. And when I mean gigantic, it's way too big for me. It's enough for like three people, if you ask me. So this is our second bedroom that we didn't really need as a bedroom because, well, to be honest, in the beginning we thought we would have like a lot of friends visiting or family or whatever. I will grill my friends or family forever for never ever in my eight years in China visiting me. Well, nobody ever visited me, not even once. That's on you guys. When we moved in, this room was basically an empty space, but it's beautifully lit. Like, you know, this apartment doesn't have a balcony, which some people might think is bad. Like, if you're smoking, you probably want a balcony. We don't smoke, so we don't care that much. And our uh, neighbors who smoke just do it in the corridor. And, you know, it's China. People are smoking everywhere and nobody cares. And the restaurants even, what the hell? But anyway, uh, we adapted it to like a little office. We don't do any work here, we play games. <laughs> There's another wardrobe for another free people if you're interested. The amazing thing about this apartment is that we get so much sunlight that my plants, which wouldn't grow in the past apartment, like not even a little bit, here they grow so much I cannot even fit them here anymore. In a hindsight, I don't think we needed a second room to begin with, but you know, it was here so we used it. Uh, the day isn't too great today. It looks like it's going to rain anytime. As somebody is drilling upstairs, I'm sorry if you're hearing this. But this is another sad reality. When you're living in China, like, they are allowed to do it. There are some times when they are not allowed to do it, but then nobody enforces it. And when you try to uh, complain, like nothing happens, unless it actually like threatens your life, like somebody's drilling upstairs and uh, the ceiling is falling on your head, then there is a chance that somebody will do something about it. So behind my window is just like some other buildings, a street. It's amazing to have as much um, open space as I have here, because if you're living in a city center, there is a good chance that uh, you'll be living in like a smaller apartment building. So your window will come out to like another apartment building and you will see somebody, somebody else's window. So for a quick sum up, I think this area is amazing to live in. It's city center, but it's not center enough for, for uh, tourists or, or businessmen to come in here. I don't have a river of people every day at my door. Now, uh, because it's in a, a nicer residential area, we also have a Bao An at the entrance, which um, I appreciate, but some people don't like it. Basically, Bao An is a person who always sits downstairs and checks like who comes in and who comes out. It's always nice to have a good relationship with those people because one day you might need something and they might be able to help. Like for example, if you lost the key to your apartment, they might be able to find you a locksmith to open your door for you. If there's water leaking, they might be able to help you as well in case you cannot get a hold of your landlord because normally your landlord would be in charge of fixing that. My uh, previous apartment building was in a non-residential area. It was uh, basically the whole building was an office building, which I didn't know when I signed the contract. So we didn't have a Baoan and we also didn't have uh, anything like a building manager who would be in charge of, I don't know, scolding the people who are drilling at, at 2 p.m. on a work day. It wouldn't do anything, like they would keep on drilling because they don't care. But you would have the satisfaction of knowing that you did something. All in all, guys, this is honestly the best apartment that I've ever had. In China, in Europe, anywhere I've ever lived, this is as good as it can get, I guess. Now, if you'll excuse me, I will get down to my workout because I have enough floor space to put a yoga mat on it, isn't it? Amazing. <laughs>